Okay, guys. Um, I'm going to start doing some examples of real world point of molecules taking point groups form. And so last time I talked about the flowchart method where you kind of rule out low symmetry and then first and then high symmetry. And then you choose between C and D families. So, let's look at triphenylphosphine. This one's a pretty cool one. These are it's what you would call a propeller shaped molecule. Um, these phenyl rings they're pushing up towards us and the other half is going down on the page so you can see right away you're going to have a C3 axis so you definitely have C3 however if you tried to rotate this on its side let's just reposition there's the one phenyl there's another phenyl. Remember, it's coming up towards us on this side and going back on the opposite side. And on this side, it's coming up towards us and then going back. Same thing, coming towards, going back. If you try to do this, because they're all kind of oriented the same way, you're not going to be able to do a C2 through here. Normally, with these kind of molecules, you can get a C2, but because it's propeller shaped, that's not happening. And then, so the next point in the flow chart is we want to go and we ruled out the D, so we know it's in the C family because it only has one primary rotation axis. So now we need to look at reflection planes. And first, we want to try and see if it has a vertical reflection plane that's with the axis and does it? It does not. Because while these would reflect, this one would not reflect. Um, see that one's coming up towards us. If we reflect it through that, this one would have to be coming up towards us and that would have to be going back and it just it's not going to happen. So we've pretty much ruled out the vertical reflection plane. Now does it have a horizontal reflection plane? And Again, it does not. If you do a horizontal reflection plane in with the paper, um, you can kind of see if that's coming up towards us, it would have to be coming back down on the same way. But because it's a planar molecule and it's slanted, you just can't have it reflecting the same way um, horizontally. So actually, it has no reflection planes. And it doesn't have an S operation because it doesn't have any reflection planes and you can't do an S on it so it ends up just being a C3 point group it's pretty much an easy one but it might be hard to get that if you didn't see any of the, if you uh, thought you might have seen a reflection plane or not because sometimes you might be tempted to say this is C3V but actually there is no vertical reflection plane in this molecule if you go up from the C3 axis. Next I want to look at a simple square pyramidal molecule. Um, we have iron as the central ligand, or the central um, metal, and then the ligands are all fluorines. This one's pretty easy. You can see right away you've got a C4 right down through that fluorine right there. Got a C4 axis. But if you tried to go through along this one, that wouldn't work because you don't have a fluorine that would be parallel to the one on the top. So you don't have a rotation axis to the side. That puts us in the C family. Because remember, if you're in the D family, you need one rotation plane that is perpendicular to the primary rotation axis. So now we need to look at and check out if we have any um, reflections. So first, if you go by the flow chart, you want to see if you have a horizontal reflection. Now, because this is the primary axis right down through here, we want to look and see if there's a reflection plane that would go maybe like this. And there's not, because again, that top fluorine is not going to be reflected down at the bottom, even though everything else will. 
so there's no sigma h. Now let's check if there's a vertical reflection plane. And there is. In fact, there are two of them. You can go through, and you have one right here. It goes through this fluorine, this fluorine, this fluorine, and then these two are reflected back on each other. And of course, it goes through the iron, too. And again, you have one that goes this way, obviously. Sorry if that's getting a little cluttered right now. But let me see. There it is. So now we have a C4, and we have this. And to pick this point group, that's really all we need. You can say from that, this is a C4V point group. Now let's look at what happens if we change this a little bit. Um, we're still going to have this, and it's still going to be square pyramidal, except on the top we're going to put a bromine, and then we're going to have the remaining planar ligands down here. These are all going to be fluorines. So let's see how this changes the point group. Okay. Again, you still have your C4. Because obviously all these fluorines are the same, so you can rotate it 90 degrees and it'll be okay. Those will interchange fine. However, you're still not going to be able to have a horizontal reflection plane. Because obviously before you didn't have a fluorine down there to match it, now you definitely don't have a bromine down there. But, this might be surprising, you might have thought you've lost some symmetry, but actually you're still in the same point group because you do have a vertical reflection plane through here. You can go through the bromine, go through the fluorine, go through the iron and the other fluorine, and then you still have that reflection plane. And again, it'll work on the other side. You've still got both of those reflection planes, and they're fine. So you still end up with C4V. But what if we change something else? What if we took one of these ligands and made it a chlorine over here, and one of these a fluorine, and the one opposite that chlorine and other chlorine? So this time, you need a 180 degree rotation to match that symmetry. So you're only going to have a C2 axis. No C4 anymore. And while you're definitely not going to have a horizontal reflection plane, you are still going to have a vertical reflection plane. So in this case, you're going to have a C2V molecule. So guys, I think that's all I'm going to do for this video. And I'm probably not going to solve any more point groups unless I get requests for them. Or any molecules somebody wants to submit them, I'll do them on a video. After this, I'm going to actually do problems for infrared spectroscopy and the Raman spectroscopy. And then finding orbitals. So, Alright guys, see ya.